This is from Ender Long Lun from Toronto. Right. Your actual personal predictions for the main event of WrestleMania. The tag match Rock and Reigns versus Seth and Midcard Cody. And then Cody versus Reigns who walks out the winner the night of. Feel free to go go a bit in depth with some prediction as to how the story overall plays out. Big ups K Dog Disco and Feeney. I'm smoking a f for y'all. Boom. Yeah. Um I gave up my predict I, I gave my I, I don't first of all we don't like predicting stuff. I don't like to like get in the you know the fantasy booking and stuff and because that's what everybody likes to argue about. Like the you know I like to see the story. You like to be out. surprised, right? Right, right. I, I don't I don't I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm, that's why I've been I'm enjoying not, I've been yeah. enjoying a lot this whole the C the CM Punk set, uh, uh, the third kind, a Drew thing. I'm enjoying that a lot because they're cutting, you know, uh, good promos on each other, right? right? And then I'm loving the Roman Reigns thing because, you know, Rock just went full heel, which I never thought he would do, right? Sure. And um, and you've got to think, we already know what one main event is going to be, the tag team match. And you've got to think they've got to do Roman and Cody because that's why they changed the Rock match. What else could happen? Yeah, but isn't what's the stipulation? If if Rock and Roman win, then uh, the, bloodline the bloodline is who, yeah. Who no gives about all that. That's just something they threw in there to make it more interesting. At the end of the day, I think I believe that they have to go with Cody. That's why they changed the Rock match. Why would you change the Rock's match for Cody to lose? Yeah, I think Cody will win the belt, but the night before, I think the Rock and Roman will win, and then they'll have that Bloodline Rules match. All right, yeah, that's cool. So, right now, and he'll and he'll and he'll fight all. You know, he'll you know, and, and then somebody have, somebody will come out and help him against the Bloodline. Yeah, and he'll have to winning. But here's here's the only thing, with, and this is why I don't care about fantasy booking, okay? Because if you get it right, it's like you didn't book it. It's like you guessed. What the bookers wrote, like that's what right. getting the angles. <laughs> so, so, the, to me, there's no, there's nothing fun in that. You know what I'm saying? Like figuring out what the writers are are writing. But I will say this: I, I brought up a a scenario. There's a YouTube clip out on uh, Mr. Kevin for me. If you want to listen to it again, um, I had a, just off the top of my head an idea that I had found out when we talked about MJF last week. Right. That I thought. That if the deal is like bloodline rules, and then it's like just one on one bloodline. If, if they win the tag match, which you would assume it's WrestleMania. Okay, I don't know how they're gonna do, but like I'm, I'm assuming that it's the main event of the night one. You send the babyface pop, they win the match, right? So it's just one on one. So all the people, all the current TV characters, are all they're, they're not allowed, right? They're not gonna see them. It's just gonna be one on one. My my thing was that they had just hired. A couple new Samoan characters, and like that, that that clash at the castle with Drew McIntyre is when they 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 thought the blood was going to lose, and Solo Sokoa showed up out of nowhere as a big surprise. My just off the top of my head, fantasy booking on this was that the Samoan character that that they just hired shows up. Okay, he's not really part of the blood, and shows up and helps Roman. But that being said, it's like Cody outsmarted them. And he had MJF waiting. He doesn't work there. Like he had MJF like in his back pocket, ready to like thwart, thwart that, right? And, I, and somebody like I think I, on the, uh, the I, when I played that that um, clip, we had that clip on YouTube. A lot of the comments were like, because um, I thought there would be if MJF saved Cody, and Cody won, being in that smart town of Philadelphia, we get a huge pop. A lot of people commented and said they don't think anybody know who, who MJF is. No. And I was like, I, as a, cause, cause think about this. Cody was an AEW guy. He came in WWE. People obviously see that he was like the number one. He's still been the number one baby face ever since he came back. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think for sure that MJF, I, I don't know. I, I, that's, that's my fantasy book. And I don't like to do that, but I'm doing this one time. There's a guy asking me, but I don't, one I just want only. to be surprised. You know, but I'm, I'll say this. This is another thing too. Would you, why? Uh, why uh, we put? Well, I'm going to say this because this is the, the the promo that they should have been cutting on, on Cody, right? The bloodline or, or Paul, maybe to like you know get in, in Cody's head. 
Okay, Cody says, you know, he, hey, he needs to finish the story. Right? Okay, so so Paul Heyman, if I was he, if I was writing there, I would give Paul Heyman this material. Say, okay, Cody, if, you know, if, you, if your story's finished, then what do we need you around for? You're done. Are you going to retire when you when you win that belt? Are you finished? Your story's over. We don't need you anymore. Are you ready to like, when your story is ended, you should just go away. And like, you know, like, like throw that in. Like, what what are you going to do after you win the title? Cody, if your story, is that, is that you've, you've finished your story. My thing is, it's like with, with this, this whole thing, is like, bro, the Bloodline story's been going on for four years now. And it's been really good, right? Since when did we put this time constraint on Cody's story? Like, why does it have to be like, like it, his story ends at WrestleMania, finish his story. That that's what it's, it's like. the biggest stage, you know. Where are that? But like, but in the big picture, continuously extending the story isn't that big of a deal. Oh, you're not continuing the story. What I would say, if you would tell me that, you know, well, what do we need you around and all that, and I would just say something like, you know, I won the championship. Okay, that's that was my story. I fulfilled what my brother and my dad couldn't do. But now what a champion does is, is he takes on all comers. Yes. Yeah. Next. Right. Yeah. But now here's the other thing. Uh, uh, coming off what you were saying with the MJF thing. Um, and first of all, Philly's too smart of a crowd with people coming in from New York and all over. MJF. Yeah. MJF of course. Yeah. A huge pop, right? He was over in that market huge anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. So I would almost have, you know, Solo Sokoa and uh, what's the other guy's name? Um Solo and Jimmy, right? Right. And maybe even with the four, other, the two other guys you said might be coming in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, it's a no DQ match and they go in there and they're on Cody. All of a sudden, Jay comes out. He hits one guy with like a, with like a tube or a two by four mm-hmm. steel pipe. He hits the other guy, but the other two guys get on him. Okay. And that's when somebody comes in in a hood or something. And when he, and, and he, you know, helps Jimmy do a comeback on these two guys and he takes off his hood and it's MJF and the and the guy says, Oh that's MJF. That's Cody's protege. He followed him here to WWE. When they shake hands, he hits him with something, MJF. And the last thing you see is Cody laying on the floor with MJF smirking. Go ahead. Well, no. Then you have priests come down, pin him. <laughs> after the stick, you know, and they're like, you know, all right. But I, I, uh, um, I don't like him turning on him if, it, if that was the case. But, but I will say this, bro. Look at the type of TV that they're doing right now. Okay, the show is like a lot of long form interviews. You know, like fifty, like bro. These interview segments are like twenty minutes long these days. You, you notice that going in, yes. right? And it's like, but they're very entertaining because right. you guys have a lot of long form talkers, bro. Just imagine MJF. You throw, you throw a new character. Whose whose stick is as good as anybody on that show, and you throw him in the middle of this, right? It just makes it more. You don't see it. It's it's like if he does go back to AEW, he would have to probably just like watch you raw each week and see him doing massive business and just be going like, what? But but maybe he will be there someday, you know. But right now would be a perfect spot for you know. I don't think this is the time. I just just you don't from, think so? well. I no. I agree that it would be great. I just think he's under contract and he's out hurt, and this just is all fun to fun to, fun to speculate. But yeah, well, just from reports, you know. Just from well, like I said, is he back on the on the, uh, on their page yet? Because let no. me, let me tell you something. They took him off the merchandise page too. Yeah, you think he would yeah. be cool with like, hey, take? I can't make any money off merchandise right now to sell this angle. Like, think I think about that, Cody. If you, you want to sell an angle, right? And like, you want to, you know, you're. They're, they're literally saying, okay, hey, I'll pay, but but you can't sell your merchandise. We got to make it look real. That wouldn't be like something I would be cool with. Yeah, well, how much merchandise can he be making if he's out? And maybe they even told him, hey, you know, here's so much money to cover your merchandise while we do this angle. Mm-hmm. I just can't believe with all the errors he's made and everything he's done that Tony would let him do everything he's done on TV, all right, knowing he's going to leave. But, but 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 you but you came up with it. He's a nice, but but we heard maybe Tony's just too much of a nice yeah, guy. Yeah, the, the clear the picture. That's why she's not. Right? That's not being nice. That's being right? dumb. Yeah. That's not yeah. being nice. Okay. Right. And here's the other thing. 
you brought up something to me that I really didn't even think about until you brought it up. They did kind of bury him on his way out. Yeah. Absolutely you know? did. Yeah. So made but, him look stupid made him look very stupid. Yeah. But they yeah. do that but they do that a lot. So right. right. Uh, next there was question. um just just real quick, Jack, because this goes back to the punk conversation, but it's a funny little dig I heard and we didn't play it. <sighs> so they're talking about, you know, the the Wembley show and okay, now punk's gotten into the scrap with, with Jack Perry and Samoa Joe and Jerry Lynn convince him to go wrestle and all that. And so Ariel says, um, yeah, you know, you got to wrestle. There's a lot of people there, 100,000 people, right? And Punk went, I don't know. You'd have to check the turnstile count. You know? <laughs> <laughs> bro, he just, bro, just a, this is like a, you know what the funny thing is, too? Is they're in WrestleMania season, and there's blood in the water right now. And here they are. Punk's not even, Punk can't even wrestle, right? Literally said, you know, Nick Khan probably said, Punk, go on Ariel's show and just say whatever you want. Make some news. Because, bro, he's burying AEW even more. It's like a week, a week of positivity for the WWE going into WrestleMania, and there's, they still found time to, to take shots at how poorly AEW is being run. You know, with the punk interview. Bro, they're just ruthless. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, they should have yeah. never... And, and think about this. Ariel probably isn't a big fan of Tony. Either. No, right. He's a willing participant. Yeah. yeah. Right. You should, right. bro, you should see him in the promo. He's so excited asking yeah. these questions about the, because like, bro, you had Tony on. That's Tony's great nothing. Thing, you're and you know what? And what's great about him is he knows that Punk is one of these guys that no matter what you ask him, he's going to answer it. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's going to be honest about it. Whether yeah. And right or wrong. Punk's been going on that show for like 10 years or more, you know, and every time he does, he makes news. So, yeah, and Ariel's a fan. So, yeah, he probably loves the guy. Yeah. Well, Punk, Punk is his, his whole gimmick is his shtick pretty much these days, you know? Right. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh... Thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.